So today we're starting our space unit. So you should have your space sketchbook and we're gonna walk through that today. And then you're just gonna complete the pages along with me. So first we're gonna talk about the definition of space. Space is the area around, inside, or between shapes or forms. On page one, you need to write the definition of space and then decorate the word space in a way that describes the word. When you are done with this page, you can go ahead and move on. I would go ahead and pause the video while you are finishing. And then you can go ahead and resume when you're ready to go on to page two. So let's talk about different types of space. There is positive and negative space. The green arrow is showing an example of positive space. Okay, positive space is the space occupied by an object. Negative space is the negative is the space around the object. Here's another example of positive and negative space. In this example, you can see it in this sculpture where the space here, the positive space taken up by the paper and the negative space taken up by the wall creates this image of a person just by the shapes and the different colors. So on page two, you're going to create an example of positive and negative space. I've created one for you. Remember, positive space is the object, negative space is the area around the object. So you're gonna draw any object. My example is I drew a marker, and then you're going to label. The positive space would be the marker, the negative space would be the area around the marker. When we are creating space in an artwork, there are six different ways that you can show this. The first is overlapping, the second is scale, the third is placement, the fourth is detail, the fifth is color and value, and the sixth is called linear perspective. So we're gonna talk about each of those. Overlapping can be used when one object partially covers another object. This helps, create, this helps to create the illusion of depth because space must be present in order for one three-dimensional object to cover another. So the example here are these pumpkins that are overlapping. Scale is another way we can show space. Scale refers to the size of an object in relation to another object. For example, this tree in relation to this tree. When things are further away in an artwork, like this tree, they appear smaller. Things that appear closer often appear bigger. Placement are things that are positioned higher up on a page or closer to the horizon line, this is the horizon line, appear to be further away. So in this picture of these uh, buoys or rafts in the ocean, so you see the horizon line, the ones that are closer to the horizon line or further away appear to be smaller and further away. Closer, the further away they are from the horizon line, the closer they appear to you. Detail is another way we can show space. Things that appear closer in an artwork usually have more detail and things that are further away in an artwork typically have less detail. Color and value can be used, for example, this atmospheric perspective photo is a great example of two things, atmospheric perspective and how we can use color and value. Objects that are usually closer are brighter and darker and things that are further away are often lighter and not as, more, not as vibrant. So on page five, you're going to draw an example of each of these. I did not do this for you because I provided images of each one. Okay, so you need to take these images and come up with a way that you can, you can draw an example of each. Linear perspective is where you place things in relation to the horizon line. Okay, so here's the horizon back here and you see that the relation of these objects coming from the horizon line give the perspective that this is going backwards because of the way that they're placed along the side of the, the artwork. Okay, we can also use layers in an artwork to create space. For example, we can use a background, a foreground, and a middle ground. Example, the foreground in this photograph would be the trees in the road, the middle ground would be these hills, and then the background would be these hills far away in the sky. So you're gonna do pages three and four next. On page three, you're going to color and the foreground so here's the foreground. You're gonna color the middle ground next, and then you're gonna color the background last. Then on page four, you're gonna color using atmospheric perspective. Remember, the ones that are closer are darker, and as it goes further away, it gets lighter. So you can do one of two things. You can use the same color and 
just keep doing different shades as it gets lighter. Or you can use one color pencil. So say I use this blue, I could color really dark here and then just get lighter and lighter and lighter as I go up. Okay, so that's what you are going to do today. Um, and then I want to kind of take a look at page five. So give me just a second. Okay, so it looks like we already completed page five. So let's just kind of review what you need to get done today. So you need to get page one done, page two, page three, page four, and page five. And those are the ones that we are doing together during class time. Page six and seven are kind of one together. They're very quick and easy. Those are the other two that are due this week. So you have one through seven due on Friday. Once again, if you go to your Google Classroom, you will find the assignment and you will turn them in there.